cozy maple muffs. Welcome to another episode of Eurosis, where we're going to be watching and reviewing songs from Eurovision 2019. And this week, we're going to have a look at um, yeah, Latvia, Georgia, Cyprus and Finland. So let's get on with it. First on our list is Latvia, which is represented by the band Carousel with the song That Night. Carousel used to be a duo, now they're supposedly a quartet. They started off as a cover band. Only last year they started making their own music and they decided to compete in the national selection for Eurovision. So the new band members are a double bass player and a drummer. So double bass makes me think of maybe jazz. The lyrics, according to what I've read, are about um, again being unhappily in love, missing your loved one that you've broken up with or you're basically separated from. Let's see. Acoustic instruments, like a fun. She has a nice voice, definitely. It's very like soothing. Although she's like breathing too much, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. <sighs> I guess it's supposed to sound seductive. And the, the instrumental accompaniment almost doesn't change. Okay, now the bridge, so yeah, now it has changed. Oh, that was the shortest bridge ever! It, it doesn't have enough variety in it. I, I would definitely like more changes in the song. It's a bit monotonous. At, at some point it just gets boring, and it's only a three minute song. So, you know, that's not a good sign. It just almost sounds a little bit as if they ran out of ideas of what to do with the song. So it was it was very monotonous. Like definitely you would need more variation. Yeah, variation is the word that I was looking for. Other than that, it's good. I would like some more out of it. I guess that's it. Let's move on. Our next contestant is Otonam Sadze from Georgia, and he's going to perform a song in Georgian. Yay! Oh. He was born on 18th of June, 1989. Ah, so fellow snake! Nice! Otto Nemsadze is best known as the winner of the fifth season of Girlstar, which is the Georgian version of Idol. Yeah, but after that, he basically started to just participate in other talent shows. So in 2014, he was on The Voice of Ukraine, and then later he was on Your Face Sounds Familiar. And then this year he won the Georgian Idol again, in my opinion. Like after winning a talent show, right? Either you finally become an established artist and you have a music career or just be gone. Why are you coming back? But to be fair, the Georgian Idol uh, is the basically the official Georgian selection for the Eurovision Song Contest. So I guess maybe his goal was to go to Eurovision and this was the only way to do this. The lyrics seem to be very... Well, they're quite simple and they're kind of like very repetitive. It's all about like, yeah, keep going, keep going, <laughs> do your thing, kind of. Uh, and keep going and keep singing. That's basically it. There's a lot of uh, references to Georgian culture. So they mention the uh, the traditional instrument chonguri in the in the lyrics. So. Are we going to hear Chonguri in the in the song? I hope so. The chorus goes like Varado Varado Varadarada He, which is not translated. Is there anybody Georgian out there? If if there is, then please tell us. It doesn't mean anything. I've uh, googled Varado, and uh, the only thing that came up was that in Abkhazia they have this song Varado. So I guess it's like a traditional Georgian song. Let's listen and find out what it sounds like. Such intensity. Yeah. Oh my God. I 
He's doing good. Yeah, I would prefer less growling there because it kind of reminds me of the Polish singer Michał Wiśniewski. And it's not a good association. What's up with this chick? She's kind of ruining the, the mood here. Everybody knows that you can stand up and sway to the music in the voice, but not on idol. Where did she go to the school of judging? Okay, I'm not sure about that, like, um... So he did that again! The trick with the mic! It's like, that's his move, clearly. Okay, now, like, I loved it at the beginning, now I'm... I have to say I'm a little bit conflicted. Of course, it's a it's a power ballad, so theoretically not my favorite thing. But I guess I'm really partial to men with very low pitched voices. I'm afraid. I'm not sure about the this this Michal Wisniewski vibe that he's giving me. Michal Wisniewski had this very like very distinctive growl that he would do. Stan, powiedz nie jestem sam i nigdy więcej już nikt nie powie sępie miłości. Nie kochasz, ja jestem panią mych snów, moich marzeń i lęków, moich straconych dni, moich łez, wylanych łez. It's a timeless Polish classic. It's hard. I don't know how he did that, to be honest. I don't know how he's throat survived that. This guy could totally nail this. I'm pretty sure, though. I liked his intensity on stage. At first, like, when I first saw him and he was, like, slouching, he seemed shy, almost. And, and then he was kind of like, he had this intensity to his performance. This growling, and then I would have loved it. Okay, so that's all that I have to say about this one for now. Let's move on. The next entry that we're going to watch is from Cyprus and it's performed by Tamta, who is a singer from originally from Georgia, but she started her music career in Greece on Greek Idol. Uh, so also a child of talent shows. Uh, since then though, it seems like she has done quite a lot. So she has released four albums since then. Most of her singles topped the charts. She has also um, done a little bit of uh, musical theater. She actually acted in uh, Rent and Cabaret. Yeah, and Cabaret as Sally Bowles. Like, wow. From 2014, she has been a judge on The X Factor, both in Greece and in Georgia. So she seems to be a super popular artist in both of these countries. So of course Cyprus had to steal her for themselves. The song that she's going to sing is Replay. So as you can guess, it's in English, so boo. It has like several songwriters, but it's produced by Alex P, who wrote the last year's Cypriot entry. And the lyrics seem to be about uh, there's a guy who's kind of obsessed with her, not not entirely though, he only calls her at 2am in the morning uh, saying that he's missing her. Basically it's all about the fact that she's so good and bad that this guy just can't, like, can't forget about her. I'm expecting some dance music, finally. Yeah, let's see if I'm right about this one. Okay, I'm happy that it's a more 
more energetic song, we needed something like this. So Cypress has clearly decided to just basically go with what worked the last time. I think that maybe like a, a slightly stronger diversion from what was shown last time would have been advisable. It's good though. It's not as catchy as Fuego, for sure, I think. It still has a catchy chorus though. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's going to also achieve a certain degree of popularity. I don't have maybe super strong feelings about it. Our last contestants from Finland are Darud and Sebastian Raymond. Darud is... At first, like I was reading, didn't ring any bells. And then I just, I read the descriptions and it said that Darud has this famous track, Sandstorm. And then it's like it clicked. Basically, everybody knows that song. Just Google Sandstorm. I, I bet you're going to recognize it. So that means it's going to definitely be EDM. The funny thing is, the whole description uh, on Eurovision's website is basically about Darude and about how accomplished he is, uh, how many singles, how many albums he's released. But the song was actually written by Sebastian, the guy who's just featuring, you know, according to this. The multi-talented Raymond who wrote the original song is both a musician and an actor. Again, another multi-talented person. Do you know, if you are a musician and any good cast as an actor, that means you're taking up a spot of someone who is only dedicated to being an actor. You're taking away opportunities from people. How can you live with yourself? Actually, the, the song was selected first and then Darud was kind of invited to join in and then collab with, with Raymond. Well, but they have actually worked together before, so I guess it kind of was just organic to them. According to this, he's the best-selling artist from Finland. Is it correct though? Like, I'm pretty sure there are other very famous artists from from Finland. There's there's H.I.M. There's the Rasmus. Apocalyptica are also Finnish, aren't they? So is he the biggest music expert in, from Finland? I'm not sure. I mean, maybe he is, or maybe he was at some point. I, I can believe that. Let Oh yeah, so about the lyrics. I have to read it to you because I actually love it. There's something you should know that I can't sing a love song anymore. I can't sing a love song anymore? Great, because we definitely don't need more of those. How can we go to sleep at night and lay there in our beds when we know what's going on with the world today? I relate to this because totally sometimes I'm in my bed and I'm like, I can't sleep because I'm thinking about all the crap that is going on. Well, at some point we just have to go to sleep. I sleep deprivation is not going to save the world. But I definitely feel like, yeah, it's not right. And you, like you want to do something, but at the same time you feel kind of helpless. I get what that's like. Okay, so let's hear it. It reminds me of Robert Miles. Somehow the songs from this Eurovision keep reminding me of dead DJs. I'd be like, 
Actually, no, I don't think that I would like it in any circumstances. I, I don't think that I would listen to that song, but under certain circumstances, I could dance to it. I mean, I would definitely dance to it. I mean, if I'm, if I'm in a club, I just dance. Because what else are you supposed to do there? And I think that this is the thing about about techno, right? You're kind of forcing people to, to listen to that music, even though they don't want to. I mean, I'm pretty sure that there are people out there who love techno. I don't like it. I like electronic music, but I don't like techno specifically. There's definitely some songs, uh, some techno songs that I do like. This one is pretty forgettable. The vocals are too prominent. Overall, not the best effort there. Okay, so overall, what do you think? I would say that there were interesting entries here that for sure are going to do well, and I'm thinking about Cyprus specifically. I would say that all the, the songs that we've heard were good songs, but I've had issues with kind of with all of them, so it's very hard for me to choose my favorite out of this set. I would have to go with Cyprus probably as the best one. I'm really interested to hear your opinion, so don't hesitate to share. Thank you very much for sticking with me today, and I hope to see you soon on another episode of Eurosis. So, yes, bye! <music> ah! Totally forgot to bring my earphones. Wait a minute. Okay, ah. here we are. Is it the one? No. So, let's get on with it. Because it was a huge hit. Like, in 2004 or something? Let me find it. Yeah, in the early 2000s. So, at some point. I mean, I guess I could really find it if I tried, but I didn't really care enough. Stań, powiedz, nie jestem sam I nigdy więcej już nikt Nie powie sępie miłości Nie kochasz, ja jestem Panią mych snów Moich marzeń i lęków Moich straconych dni Moich łez, wylanych łez